Hi, I'm Jonathan Welsh from the Crankshaft Journal, and I'm on my way to the garage to uh, check in on a visitor who's staying with us for a few weeks. Uh, it's not a um, some poor unloved relative. No, this guest is a motorcycle, a new model, uh, electric powered, and no, it's not the Harley Davidson Livewire. In fact, this is the bike that's setting the bar that Harley is going to have to clear if the live wire is to be successful. I'm talking about the Zero SRF. If you follow the motorcycle industry, you probably know about Zero, a California company that's been selling electric motorcycles for more than a decade. In that time, competing manufacturers came, failed, disappeared. Some are still around, but none has turned out electric bikes in volume the way Zero has. The company's lineup includes a sport bike called the S, a dual sport DS model that's more of an all-rounder, plus off-road machines designed for motocross and enduros. But Zero still has a difficult time connecting with some riders, and I wonder if that reflects the public's supposed aversion to electric power or just the bike's utter lack of swagger. It's true, the small, understated zeros just don't grab attention the way many gasoline-powered motorcycles do, but the company plans to change that with the SRF. The new bike is different. It's big and aggressive looking, with a huge motor totally exposed out there for all to see, like a modern naked bike. It has a massive battery also that suggests serious power. It maybe doesn't have the visual appeal of, say, a Laverta Triple or a Bevel Drive Ducati Twin, but still, bike fans who like looking at engines will notice this machine's mill. The bike's athletic styling is also eye-catching. It looks somewhat like a Ducati Monster 1200 or BMW R9T. It also reminds me a bit of my 82 Suzuki GS1100L, which can't quite match the Zero's 110 horsepower, but has the same weight, around 100, uh, rather 485 pounds. So the Zero is no lightweight, but would it at least feel light on its feet? How would it perform on the road? I was anxious to see. And on the side of the road, would it crank out thrills but also draw crowds and compliments every time I parked it? One way to find out. Riding the SRF is, well, quiet as you might expect, with just a faint hum emanating from its motor. This builds to a stronger whine above 40 miles per hour or so, but the bike never howls or shrieks, even at highway speeds. Above 60 or so, the wind noise does start to make up for some of those lost decibels from the absence of an engine. Now, puttering around town, you realize just how much people rely on their ears to know when a motorcycle's coming. Like with other electric bikes, I felt like I was always sneaking up on pedestrians and startling them. Didn't really seem fair, made me feel like a bad citizen. In one case, as I was easing up to a stoplight, a man waiting to cross the street looked up from his phone and he jumped and nearly dropped the thing. I was surprised, I guess, and probably just wondering where the heck this guy on the bike came from all of a sudden. The Zero wins practicality points on short local rides, including light grocery runs. What looks like a gas tank is really a storage compartment that can hold the contents of a grocery bag as long as the items have the right shape. Bags of coffee, pet food, laundry, or a gallon of milk all fit fine. But if you're bringing, say, a baguette home, you'll have to break it in half to get it in there. You'll find lots of reasons to ride more often with a bike like this because getting going is so easy. Just switch it on and go. There's no fiddling, no setting the choke, waiting for the engine to warm up, any of that old-fashioned stuff. It's You just flip the switch and you're off. Of course, riding around town can still be annoying due to the same things that plague most motorcyclists, regardless of what they're riding. Dense, slow-moving traffic clogs the road, then construction zones, stop signs, red lights, and rail crossings all seem to join in some sort of conspiracy against you. And let's not even get started on pedestrians yakking on phones, not watching where they're going, like this one, who never knew I was there. The sooner you reach the open road, the better, and make it a back road instead of an interstate highway. Rural two-lane roads with speed limits of 50 miles per hour or less, like those crisscrossing western New Jersey, are best for the SRF. The relatively low speeds don't sap its battery so quickly, and there are lots of opportunities to regenerate its charge by coasting and braking gently. 
Zero says the bike can reach 120 miles per hour for whatever that's worth. Not like you're ever going to do that. But it's much happier at half that speed and even more so between, say, 25 and 50. It's not glamorous, but that's the real sweet spot. The big difference between the SRF and most other bikes is the sensory experience. While you feel and hear the rush of passing air, there's no mechanical rumble from an engine or the roar of exhaust. Now, as a devoted engine person, I thought I'd really miss the background noise, but I didn't. Neither did my family or my neighbors because I was no longer waking them up at dawn on a Sunday with the throb of my Ducati warming up. On the road, the Zero's near silence even sharpened the sensation of speed at times. Now, bear with me on this, but I guess it had to do with cutting the number of distractions. For sure, though, the fantasy of lifting off and soaring through the air, something that motorcyclists talk about all the time, was a bit stronger with this bike than when I ride a traditional gasoline-powered machine. I found it really easy to reach that weird balance between disconnecting from the world but carefully watching the road. It's too bad, but you can never really immerse yourself completely in a good ride because you have to keep the people in cars from killing you. Find the right road, though, and you can indulge in a strong sense of escape. Maybe for just seconds at a time, but those seconds can be transcendent and they do add up. As a business case, the SRF will have to grab market share by supplanting a lot of traditional internal combustion powered bikes. Unlike earlier models, this machine seems ready to do it. This thing accelerates, handles, and stops with the best of its rivals. It's also handsome as hell. No apologies necessary when you roll up to a bike night gathering full of custom power cruisers and loud pipe baggers. In that harder to define metric of visceral satisfaction, there's really no metric for that, thank God. Well, let's just say this bike will move you. Twist the throttle, point the zero down your favorite country lane, and soon those hairs on the back of your neck will be standing at attention. Pleasantly so. Kind of tingling. Just what you want. Enough said. Probably more than enough. You're very kind to listen, and you can read more impressions at crankshaftjournal.com. Now please, go for a ride. Thanks.